Hello everyone, this section will introduce Solis CADA software Modbus TCP driver functions. First, let's briefly understand the Modbus communication protocol. Modbus is an industrial communication protocol. It was released by Modicon now Schneider Electric in 1979 for communication with programmable logic controllers PLCS. Modbus has become an industry standard for communication protocols in the industrial field and is now a common connection method between industrial control system devices with extensive applications. It has several characteristics. The first is that it is publicly available and there is no copyright requirement. So all the automation manufacturers can use the Modbus protocol. Secondly, it is very standardized. The third is easy to deploy and maintain in SCADA system. Modbus is commonly used to collect data from remote terminal control systems rules. Programmable logic controllers PLCS and other heterogeneous systems. Here are various forms of the Modbus communication protocol, including Modbus R2 and Modbus ASCII based on serial communication using 232 or 485 and Modbus TCP based on Ethernet TCP, IP communication. Among them, Modbus TCP is the most commonly used form. It uses Ethernet as the communication medium and features high speed and stable performance. What are the types of Modbus communication nodes and data addresses? So here's a quick look. The Modbus communication process follows a request reply pattern and involves a master station and a slave station. The master station can be considered a client side. It actively requests data. The slave station is a data server. It's the provider of the data. Accept the request from the master and send the corresponding data to the master station. Slave station data register types and address ranges are divided into several types, call to address, discrete input the address, input registers AI address, holding registers AO address. So let me show you. How is the Solis CADA Modbus driver used? The Solis CADA database already comes with Modbus TCP communication module driver, its configuration interface, as shown in this figure, when configuring the Modbus driver, we need to fill in some information, including the IP address. This IP address is the address of the Modbus TCP slave device. It can be a PLC device or some other R2 device. The default port is 502. This is the default port of the Modbus protocol. Redundant IP can also be configured. And timeout, retry, delay, and scan cycle, and other information. You can also configure the byte order of communication on this interface, such as 1234, 4321, etc. Next is to configure the data block of Modbus TCP on this interface. According to different register types, we can define its data block, including holding register, input register, call register, discrete input register. The input register is considered read only. It is generally an AI signal. The holding register is read-write. Generally, it is an AO signal. The discrete input register is a read-only register. It's generally the signal. Call register is read and write. It's a do signal. In Solis CADA software, after creating a new Modbus TCP driver, need to add the bit number of Modbus TCP. How to fill in its ITO address? On the I.O. address selection interface, we can see an offset here. Data type. 
and the byte order of the data. The offset means in a register, its relative position. For example, we read the holding register. We start reading from the tens position. Offset 0 means the tens 1. Offset 3 represents the 13th byte. Offset 5 means the 15th byte. It calculates it in this way. It has a start address, and then add the offset address to locate its actual byte address. This is a further explanation of it. Its offset address. When we read two variables, it depends on the type of the variable. The step size of its offset address reading may be different. For example, for a floating point type, it may be a 4 byte variable. Then the offset address, the first floating point number and the next one. The offset address may be two part. The first one is 0, and the second is 2. Other types are also based on such a law. Go and fill in its pin address. At the same time, it also provides a bitwise fetch operation. Its application scenarios are generally Combine the states of a group of bool values into several bytes of data for representation. For example, combine 16 status quantities into a 16-bit integer and store it in a 16-bit register holding register. For the SCADA, it receives the data of a holding register and then parses it into 16 status quantities. In this case, we need to use the bit extraction function to parse it. Here is an example, a register of 16 lengths. We take bits, take the first bit, the fifth bit, the tenth bit, the fifteenth bit, when filling in the ITO address, we can fill it in. It will extract the data related to this bit number, 0 or 1, used to represent a state of a switch. Modbus TCP driver also has the function of online debugging. After we set the configuration and data blocks, you can directly click the debug button here. Its data packets can be collected directly. You can clearly see the communication situation, whether the data is correct. Here are some information about Modbus TCP data types. Different data types. It has it is their different byte bit lengths. And its data range. This can be used as a reference. I summarize some precautions. In Modbus TCP communication, the byte order of the master station and the slave station needs to be consistent. In the driver, the start address and length of the block need to be consistent with the register area address of the slave station and should not exceed it. When performing Modbus TCP communication, reasonable parameter adjustment is required according to the device performance, such as the scan cycle and serial or parallel packet sending rules. In the Modbus TCP driver configuration of Solis SCADA, the start address link represents the first address of the register, and the latter is the after-class exercises. What are the register types included in Modbus TCP? What are their characteristics? How are the roles of the master station and the slave station in Modbus defined? What are the functions of the polling main cycle? 
and secondary cycle of the Modbus TCP driver in solid SCADA. How is the communication byte order of the Modbus TCP driver in solid SCADA adjusted? Now I will demonstrate the usage of Modbus driver. First, we open a sample project. Enter the project password to log in. Right-click and select Open from Configuration Server. Click on the database node. Double-click it. Open the database configuration interface. Right-click on this node. And select Add Driver. We find the Modbus TCP driver. Double click to add it. Add this channel. Under this channel, we can configure the IP and port of Modbus TCP communication. Tools for Modbus TCP slave. We use ModSIM to simulate. Modbus TCP slave data. We have already configured it. We fill in the IP address here. Because it's the local machine. So we can fill in 1270001. The specific internet protocol address should be set to the internet protocol address of the specific Modbus TCP slave in the project use. The port is the default. The port number is 502. Then if there are redundant devices and IP, you can also fill in here. This is the timeout time. The default is 1000 milliseconds. The retry delay. Basically, we don't need to change these parameters. Here, you can fill in the name of the device. All these parameters can be kept as default. Next, add a block. Fill in the beginning and ending address of the I.O. address here. And the length here. This length means the length of the model bus register you need for communication. It depends on the design of the project. You can keep the defaults here. The data type can be selected as holding register. Then simply do an online debug. Click on online debug. You can receive its data packets here and see its current data. We can also perform an update send decimal action on this data. In this emulator, you can see the address of the holding register. The address from 40001 is written as 10. We can also change it here and change it to 20. Let's go back to the debug interface. We can see that it is a 20 here. This is a debugging function. OK, let's save it. Next, we need to add a tag. We select the real type. Fill in the tag name and select the I.O. address. Then we choose the length offset and select the real type.
Critical K. Add the tag. Next, we add this tag to the graphics. Add a label control. We select this tag. Configuration release. Select Online Publish. Start Monitoring. After monitoring starts, log into monitoring. Let's open the picture just now. OK, we can see here, its value has been read as zero. Try writing the value. The register here has also changed. The register here has changed. Let's change this value. OK. The value in our monitoring has also changed, indicating that the Modbus communication has succeeded. This is a simple demonstration of a function.